If you want to take your information stored here in WordPress and you want to put it into documents stored here in SharePoint, but then you want to email them to your clients over here as multiple attachments, I'm going to show you how in this video. WordPress is a fantastic tool. We use it to host our learning courses using a plugin called LearnDash. And we also use it to host data and information about our customers, their buying behaviors and our products. But very often we want to get information from that WordPress location and we want to use it somehow. And I'm going to show you how we do that in the context of WordPress now. Within WordPress, you have lots of what's called plugins, tools that perform a function important to your business. Here, we've got one particular plugin that automates a lot of our business. We're a small team, so we don't have many pairs of hands to do all the manual tasks that are needed. We do things like assigning badges, we do things like issuing credit certificates, and automating the purchase behaviors of our customers. In this case, we also use this tool called Uncanny Automator to send information about the LearnDash course progress over to SharePoint in document format so that we can do work with that and we can also pass that on to our customers and our clients. Uncanny Automator is a great tool, it's very versatile. If you like what you see, I'm gonna place a link in the comments that you can, you can follow and you can go get your own free trial and have a go yourself. There is a free entry level that you can use and you can experiment with lots of different actions and see whether this is for you before you take the plunge and maybe buy. So how does it all work? Well, if you're familiar with Power Automate, you'll be familiar with how Uncanny works. It really is as simple as we have recipes, so flows in Power Automate. You have names for those recipes. In the same way that Power Automate has triggers and actions, we have triggers and actions for Uncanny. So really familiar territory, drag and drop interface, clicking buttons to select the kind of things that you want to do. You can see here I've got a, a manual trigger, you can have scheduled triggers, you can have triggers that run automatically, and then I've got two actions. There's a whole bunch of actions that you can choose from. If you click actions, you can add those actions. When you do, it's just a simple case of choosing the action that you want and then filling in the boxes. So again, pretty much the same as Power Automate. You can add filters, you can add delays, you can keep actions draft, or you can put them live. You can drag actions around on your canvas. Here, I'm just gonna delete this one and show you what we've got so far. So Mark in our team has created some PHP code, which scrapes the LearnDash database, pulls together some JSON files for us, there's four that it pulls together about the progress on LearnDash courses that we've got. LearnDash is up here is another plugin that we've got. What then happens is when those files are pulled together, they get sent across to SharePoint and stored in a document library. I then send myself an email to make sure that I know that this job has happened. It's a weekly job. That's how we run it right now. You can schedule these things to run as often or as infrequently as you like. Here, because this is a manual, I just click the run now button and it happens. So we've got a powerful combination there of a piece of code doing all that data gather for us and an automation to take all that information and place it where we need it. So let's go and have a look at the SharePoint side of it before I explain how we get that information into an email to send to our clients. As a result of running that uncanny automated job, I've now got a folder that gets created and inside that folder, I've got four files. Now that folder name, remember this bit's important if you ever wanna replicate this, this folder name can be dynamic in what I'm gonna show you. What actually happens in the real world is I get one of these folders created each week and I don't have to worry whether the folder's got a particular new name, it's all done dynamically. So imagine here, you're seeing multiple folders being created. That's what I'm gonna show you how to cater for in Power Automate. So for one folder, all that happens is it lands here, there might be loads of them, the new folder arrives, and in that folder we've got four different JSON files. You can see they landed about a minute ago. Now, the important part is I wanna bundle up each of these four files and send them to a customer. How do you do that with Power Automate? So, the first thing is we need to add our trigger, and it's a SharePoint trigger. So let's just go and search SharePoint triggers in our list here. So let's have a look at the SharePoint triggers. What you're looking for is when a file is created and specifically when a file is created properties only. Now that might sound a bit strange because actually what we're looking for is when a folder is created. But what we can do is we can pick up on the fact that files and folders kind of go hand in hand and when that action is triggered, we're gonna do a little test to see if it's actually a folder and if it is, we're gonna carry on. So first of all, we're gonna add that trigger. What comes next is as you'd expect, we choose our site, we choose our library name. So where is that document library stored? I'll just go and add my details in here. 
So I've chosen a document library. So we're also gonna add a folder in here to make sure that we only drill down to the location where we want to in that document library. Now I'm just gonna paste that in. You'll have a different location. It will be wherever your information is that you're storing from, for example, a piece of code. But that's the one for me. That's all I need to put into there and we're done. So we can trigger that particular flow. Now next up, we are gonna come back and add a few more actions, but firstly, I'm just gonna show you how you filter out anything other than a folder. So all we do here is we're just gonna add a condition. So next up, we're gonna configure that condition. Now it's a little bit different here. The trigger happened. It's got this properties only. What that means is an action has taken place and we've gathered the properties related to that action. So that's important because what we're now gonna do is gonna choose some dynamic content from that trigger. And if you just do the see more and we search for something called is folder, this is a property about that action that says, is it a folder or is it a file? So if it was a folder, is it equal to true? Then we're gonna go and do the true leg. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set up a couple of variables that we're gonna use a bit later on down and then it'll kind of make more sense as we build the rest of it. So the first thing we're gonna do is initialize an array. So we'll choose a variable, so it's a variable, and we always have to initialize it. We initialize it outside loops and all that good stuff. Give it a good name. In this case, what I'd recommend you probably do is you call it uh, collected files or you can call it attachments, call it what you like. It's gonna be an array and leave it blank for now, done. The next thing I want to do is I want to initialize a folder name. So again, it's a variable. And in this case, it's gonna be a string and we'll leave it blank to start with. So I am just gonna change this one so I know exactly what it uh, means. So great, fantastic. We've got nothing in those at the minute. So what we're gonna do here is when the SharePoint site is uh, something's added to it, if it's a folder, we're gonna go and do some work. So first up, I'm gonna get the name of the folder that's just been added. So we know it's a folder because of this condition. What's its name? I've just zoomed up. So what we're gonna do is we'll set the name of the new folder. So the folder that's just been created and has been recognized by that condition. We're gonna use this variable here. So we're gonna choose another action which is um, effectively set variable. And I've just given it a different name, set name of the new folder. Um, which variable are we gonna use? It's the one we created earlier called folder name. Uh, excuse me, and we'll just choose, I'll just show you what I did there. We chose the name of um, the folder which was created in the trigger. So click that see more, type name, and you'll find it there. And that's all you need to do to set that piece up. This is where I searched around for a lot of time. There are many SharePoint actions that you can use to go and get information, go and get data from SharePoint. So I'll just show you what I mean there. What you'll typically see in all the tutorials is something like uh, get file, probably get file properties, get file content, all that good stuff. They're fantastic. But in my dynamic uh, situation where I don't know the name of the folder, so I'm gonna have to store it. I don't know when this is gonna happen. I don't know how many files I'm gonna get. I found that these actions, the get file properties, the get file content actions, they might work for you. They didn't work for me. They created me multiple errors. So here's the secret. We're gonna use an HTTP action with SharePoint. We're gonna basically use its language to communicate with it via the Graph API. Basically go through the same language that SharePoint likes to speak in rather than through an interpreter, which are those kind of SharePoint actions. Don't know if that makes sense, but that kind of makes sense in my head. I'm going direct in its language. So what we're looking for is send an HTTP request. Um, we send an HTTP, HTTP request to SharePoint. Here's another tip. Feel free to use ChatGPT, Copilot, whatever AI tool you want to help you configure this action. Tell it what you want. It confirmed that, yeah, a site address, as you'd expect. Where's the site? Where does that live? Fantastic. It confirmed I used the get method. What it then actually gave me was the following. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to paste this in because I think it'll be um, easier to explain when I show you an example. So... What you're doing is you're effectively going to a um, the URL of the folder in machine language, if you like, that was um, that was captured during the trigger. So effectively, this trigger up here 
captured some information and it was the path to the folder. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pass on the folder name specifically. And the last little bit is it's that forward slash file. So have a look at this. I strongly recommend that if you are going to interact with um, SharePoint in this way, you go and get the support of an AI tool. It's really good at giving you the right format for send an HTTP request to SharePoint. So maybe your prompt could be, uh, tell me how to set up a send an HTTP request to SharePoint if I want to go and get files from a particular document library. We're going to need to add a header. And again, um, AI gave me this. The header is accept. You can pretty much copy this because it doesn't change. Uh, and then we're going to put in this application forward slash JSON and the O data needs to be verbose. Don't worry about what that means. That's just a switch to make sure that the information comes back in the right format. What I'd recommend you do now is pause the video, save this, run it. So effectively go and create yourself a folder with at least one document in it and then see how far you get down this flow. If you need to be debugging your flow, pop in a terminate. Uh, you can set his status to, well, I cancelled the flow, and then it will run to this point. The next action you need is a pass JSON. So what that means is we've got information back about the files in our folder. That's the first step of this flow. The second set step is to figure out how many files and chunk up that data so that we can, in Power Automate, then go and get each file, get the content, and stick it in an email. Pass JSON, yeah, it can be a little bit complex, but let's first of all choose the content we want to go for. So I'm gonna choose the body that was sent back, so it's a whole bunch of JSON from the send an HTTP request. Click body. At this point, you might be scratching your head going, ah, what do I put in here? What's this schema? How can I use a sample payload? The best advice I can give you is put this terminate here. Run your flow. That will give you an HTTP request that's actioned, it'll go to SharePoint, and in the outputs of that action, when you actually go and look at it, when it's run, go and look at the run history, you'll see the JSON. Grab that JSON and then paste it into use sample payload to create schema. So do that. What that will then do is it will give you JSON like this. If you struggle with this bit, just pop me a comment in the video, I will give you some sample JSON payload. Give it a test, you know, see what comes out there. What you're expecting to see is some data chunked up. In my case, I see four iterations of the same JSON relating to four different documents. Now, because I like to keep things under 15 minutes if I can, it's a real challenge in this case because there's loads to cram in, I'm going to show you one I built earlier now. So the first thing to remember is you've got multiple documents that have been passed and they're in your JSON right now. So we're going to create an apply to each loop. Nice and easy. Uh, we create the output from the previous steps. We'll go and um, use the body of the JSON. So brilliant. Then you're going to want to store the particular URL for each of those documents. So to do that, we're going to choose a piece of data called server relative URL. So how do I find that? Well, the JSON that you've got has a load of um, effectively nodes in it. Click the see more if you can't see it and search for relative. It's a piece of data about each of the individual items. Just select that. That's all you need to know. It will go to that particular document now almost and go and find it. Again, the next thing, loads of tutorials will show you how to get file content from SharePoint. They'll use that action. I didn't use that action. It failed multiple times. So again, I use the send HTTP request to SharePoint. Give it a decent name. But again, just nice and easy to set up. Point at your document library location. Use the get. Here, this is the structure. Again, ChatGPT gave me this. Get file by server relative URL. And insert the um, the outputs from that action there and then make sure you've got that forward slash dollar value parameters again don't change it's the accept application json verbose what's gone on there is it's it's stored the url it's gone and used that url to find the document get file by server uh, get file by relative url and now what we're going to do is create an attachment from the document now here again this is a compose this is the json that you will want to just copy and paste gpt gave me this dead easy so this is the name for the item that's in the apply to each again the name has actually come from that past json this is important though content bytes is the next item you want to be creating in this compose and what needs to go into it well i want the body that's come out of 
the HTTP request. So let me just show you that because that's a little bit awkward. Uh, dynamic content. Uh, there we go. Send an HTTP request to SharePoint. We want the body. Just make sure that goes into there. What you've then done is you created a node to effectively go and append to an array. So search for the append to array variable. Choose the array you created earlier and put in the outputs of this create the attachment content. That's all you need to do. So what is happening there is you get the file name and you get the file content attached to your array. Then the last little bit, nice and easy, use a send an email action. I've put myself in, I've given it a subject, given it some text. Important, when you get to attachments, uh, you might be able to add individual attachments, but we just want to add dynamic numbers depending how many of the documents are in that folder. So click here, click switch to input entire array and just pop in your collected files. And that, my friends, is all you need to do. So get rid of the terminate, do this, delete, give it a test and let me know how you get on. What you're looking for is an email that will land in your inbox when you're testing this, which has those files in it. So let me know in the comments if that works for you. If you have any problems, also let me know and do tell me if you want those snippets to help you get along the way. Check back, see you on our next video and like and subscribe before you leave. Take care for now.